Oh my god, welcome to the video guys, I've just watched the new trailer and I wanted to bring you my breakdown plus my thoughts all in one. What can I say initially? Uh, Fox have outdone themselves. So we open up on a shot that was taken from the prologue scene, the iconic Last Supper. Uh, using some of the dialogue from that very scene but also something new, we hear that the crew is made up of couples. It's interesting to hear this as we get that you know, amazing shot of the Covenant flying through space again. Um, you know, this is confirming that this is still the first ever large-scale colonization mission in the Aliens universe. I'm holding out hope that the rumors were true of the 2,000 people in cryosleep, um, you know, as that would really add up as well. We get the beautiful shot of the dropship flying across the planet with the lakes and just the scenery. You know, you, you really would mistake this place for being, you know, a paradise. Um, you know, they've outdone themselves on the locations for this film. We then see the dropship and the crew prepping to disembark and actually, you know, set foot on the planet. Presumably for the first time, you can see Walter in the background. And also through the door, we can see some water, which all lines up nicely with the set photos we've seen and the stills that have been released, you know, online of where the dropship is landing. As we start uh, to see the crew walking through that long grass, we also see a rover-like robot disembark from the dropship. I'm not sure if this is going to come into play later, but it is interesting to see a fully fleshed out and realized world. It's not too dissimilar to our own, um, you know, where they still use these types of machines as well. Then we start to get a sense that something just isn't right. We see the crew walking through the high grass field. This is actually confirmed to be wheat. Someone asks, what are the odds of finding wheat out here? It's a very human crop. Who planted it? Uh, Daniels is rightfully suspicious. It seems that throughout all the marketing we've had, Daniels is, you know, is the voice of reason. She's questioning, she's being suspicious, um, which is nice. I'd rather that than, you know, a damsel in distress kind of situation. So we then get a shot of the crewman stepping on the black goo pod. It's, you know, releasing obviously the airborne mutagen, leading directly into a really, really cool shot of the broken down trees at the bottom of the hill where the juggernaut lays. Um, whilst Daniels is asking the crew what they hear, absolutely nothing. There's no birds, there's no life, nothing on an entire planet. There, this is where the trailer really starts to take on a great tone. We've seen the expansive nature of the planet, we are introduced to the spores, and now we know that there is absolutely no sign of life whatsoever. So with that tonal shift, we see the juggernaut. The music through this section is really atmospheric. We see the inside of the juggernaut, presumably a doorway of some kind, overgrown with moss, vegetation, which goes nicely hand in hand with what we know. This is set 10 years after Prometheus. Uh, it shows that David and Shaw landed there shortly after Prometheus. So we see what I think to actually be Daniels or Walter uh, walking down one of the juggernaut hallways. The reason I think this could be either, if we just look at the hat that they're wearing, it matches what we've seen them both, um, you know, as they disembark from the dropship. It's a great shot though, we see the engineer sh suits standing proud either side of him or her. We get that very, very suspenseful, what happened here, uh, as Daniels is grabbing the dog tags, which actually if you zoom in, you can see that they read Dr. E. Shaw. So a lot of people were right when they thought this was, you know, Elizabeth Shaw's old tags. Anyway, moving on, the eggs, right? Absolutely amazing, uh, you know, practical effects, really, really great. They are very, very different from what we've seen before. They look absolutely massive. They look to stand almost half the size of a full-grown man, um, you know, and they also look quite man-made, engineered, if you will. Um, they have very intricate markings on the side. And then this is where we, we start to get that, you know, terror, um, the iconic egg opening scene with Crudup's character about to get face hugged and who's that in the background? Potentially David. Depending where this scene goes in the sequence of events, we've already seen Walter in his landing party gear. So this could very well be David in the background where he's wearing his original Prometheus uh, official clothing. So it's good to see the eggs um, that they actually don't react to David's presence. 
it's in keeping with what we already know about the xenomorph, um, you know, not attaching to androids, and that the overmorph has a sense of you know when a potential host is nearby. So after this, we get the end of um, you know a quote that has been playing throughout the um, you know the trailer thus far, and the quote is "The path to paradise begins in hell." So it's a really interesting quote, especially considering what scenes um, you know have been played uh, before and after it. Maybe David believes that human paradise is intertwined with the xenomorphs, becoming a greater being of sorts. So then apparently it all hits the fan. We see Daniels and McBride back on the dropship. Now, this I think is the shower uh, that we've seen in the original teaser. Everyone is notably scared and frightened, like they've either already seen something or they know something chilling is behind those plastic shields. We then get a great shot of the crewman uh, who was caught with a spore blood or black substance coming from his mouth looking in real bad shape uh, and then a quick cutscene to him pre backburster along with this woman trying to fend off I'd imagine uh, you know a neomorph with a knife I'm betting that doesn't go so well uh, the next shot is absolutely insane we see the dropship from earlier uh, I'd imagine probably pre-landing uh, but if you keep an ear out you can actually hear what I think to be the original xenomorph uh, elephant screech in the background really nice to hear that making an appearance again an interesting shot as things going crazy uh, the crew have a holographic 3d model of some landscape it could be a mountain could also be a temple looking structure it's very reminiscent of uh, you know what we've seen in prometheus so this next scene we see the engineers or what is left of them mummified corpses twisted and grotesque maybe from the black goo maybe from something else but i'm going to come back to that later um you know as the trailer progresses so then i said it in the last video um you know i didn't want to see the neomorph but we get them uh, in all their glory they look absolutely insane very very feral looking really really reminiscent of the beluga morph very quick very agile very scary um, they're very fleshy looking, but we can also see the spines down its back, similar to dorsal tubes of the xenomorph. Um, it's quick, but we can also see that the neomorph survives part of a flamethrower, and it still launches at its victim. So as the trailer progresses, we you know we see things go from bad to worse for the crew. The dropship explodes. Um, we then see who everyone is claiming is the reason for the explosion. But one thing I'd like to point out here is that there's a difference in time. The ship explodes in daylight um, and we see what could be David holding out a flare gun um, at night time. So I'm thinking actually he, he comes up with a flare gun, um, you know, and kind of blasts that into the air as, you know, everything is going crazy. Um, I'm thinking this could be David, you know, then he just later arrives when it's night time. But obviously I'm not overly sure on that. But there is a clear difference in lighting. So back to the engineers. This is the shot I'm talking about. There is thousands upon thousands of dead bodies, corpses, literally as far as the eye can see. And there is the engineer citadel in the background with some amazing statues. Um, this being the engineer city at a guess. Um, what I love about this shot is not only does it show the desolation of the planet, but at least we're getting some of the engineers again. Maybe they are all dead, maybe they aren't. But we're seeing some of the home world, and you know, I absolutely love that. Is you know, one of those things I really enjoyed about um, you know Prometheus with the engineers. So we see that robed figure walking through the bodies again. Is this David? Moving on, we see the xenomorph or the uh, protomorph in an area that looks remarkably like a testing or science lab of some kind, with a body and the chest cavity open. Maybe uh, this is obviously from a chest burster. It's interesting to note that if we see the drawings on the wall, we can see what looks like um, a face hugger attached to a human. Uh, it looks like they've been sketched. Was this David testing to see if he could create this creature? Maybe this is on the Covenant, and you know they've just obviously, you know, tried to you know cut open someone. So is that the body of Shaw? Um, it looks like the body has had its chest cavity actually cut open, operated on, rather than the xenomorph bursting from it. But this is the first time we see the xenomorph in all its glory, apparently able to scale walls, much like what we know from the original films. We see Crudup having a really, really bad time during his chestburster scene, um, at a guess anyway. We get a sense of the crew clamouring around and the ship you know, closing doors. 
but I'd like to point out this scene here. Is this Walter? Is this David? Um, you know, he's on this little screen in the corner there. It definitely looks like Michael Fassbender to me anyway. Uh, there's some really big callbacks to Ripley, where Daniels aggressively asks, where is it? Supposedly asking about the Xenomorph. Uh, this to me, this one right here, is the best shot of the trailer. We see Daniels attached to some airborne platform. Um, it doesn't look like the dropship at all, but what we see is the Xenomorph clambering underneath it, comfortably scaling it and running towards her. And all of this is set over the engineer city. We can see the big building in the background that we saw earlier. Then as Daniels lines up a shot, we see the building in the background again. It's just a beautiful shot. Um, I'm guessing that this is actually at the end of the movie, probably the final act. So we close with McBride having a really bad day. The Xenomorph surprisingly smashing his head into the glass of the cockpit. Um, we get our first real look at the Xenomorph. Even in daylight, this thing is absolutely frightening. Um, it's CGI, but it looks beautifully done, to me anyway. The tendrils on its back seem really different, um, and there are clear differences between the original and this. The fingers are longer. Um, it looks a little bit less biomech, but I've got to say, wow, this thing looks insane. So that's my trailer breakdown, guys, along with my thoughts. I want to ask you guys what you thought about this, though. Is your faith restored now? Um, personally, I know mine is. This trailer is everything I wanted, though I would have liked not to have seen the creatures. Um, I'm kind of glad I did. This has made me, I mean, I'm, you're probably hearing my voice, I'm so hyped for this film. Um, May cannot come soon enough. So I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Please let me know, you know, what you thought about this, everything that I've pointed out. Um, were, were there some things that I pointed out that maybe you missed? Um, and, you know, if you did enjoy this, then obviously don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, then click subscribe to stay up to date, you know, on all things Predator uh, and Alien. I've been Mr. H, and until next time, I'm going to catch you in the comment section.